Oh, it's great to be back on The Advocate uh, and happy to finally, well, I, we've, we've had the show together, so, um, but it's good to be back with uh, Libby uh, on the show today. Um, so my advocacy this week is deeply personal, tragic, uh, and indeed frightening. I lost a close friend on Sunday, a young man in the prime of his life. Rest in peace, Stanley Mwabia. In circumstances that appear to bear the imprint of some type of medical mishap. So while Stanley was undergoing needed blood transfusion, Stan died. As a result of donor blood being of the wrong resource factor. Apparently the hospital lab technicians um, allegedly didn't screen properly for that and my friend died. Nine years ago, Another friend of mine, Yakubu Abba, the kindest man I've ever known, also died needlessly an unavoidable death while undergoing a routine procedure in an, in an Abuja hospital. But I get it. People die. We all die. People die every day. Some will say they were indeed destined to die. But let me tell you, if you run out into the road, onto a moving train, you surely will die. And there's nothing about destiny there. It's either you just wanted to commit suicide or it's just negligence. Um, let me go further. Like a Nollywood script, Mr. Audu Bulawayo Bukati tweeted a few days ago how a certain Dr. Yakubu Hassan Kwaji was struck off the Nigerian medical practitioner's role following a petition he had written to the Medical Disciplinary Council way back in 2007. So according to him, sometime in 2016, one Issa Haman, now deceased, went to Dr. Kwaji's private clinic in Jemeta, Adamawa State, with stomach pain. Without careful examination nor due process, Kwaji collected 50,000 naira from the deceased person and rushed him into surgery. He removed the patient's both kidneys and then gave the kidneys to his relatives to bury, saying, these are the tumor causing the tummy ache. Soon, obviously, Hammond stopped urinating and started hemodialysis. Investigations in other hospitals revealed that he had no kidneys at all. Now, as if it's not bad enough that we have a huge challenge with access to health care and inadequate medical personnel, even as more professionals are leaving Nigeria daily, we have to add insult to injury. We now have to contend with a growing incidence of medical malpractices happening all over Nigeria. So I believe it is time doctors must have some sort of malpractice insurance as a requirement to practice so that families of patients who have been injured or suffered the loss of their loved ones can have some kind of recourse to some form of financial restitution and indeed make the hospital administrators realize there is a, not just a being struck off the road, but there's a high cost, a financial cost to their negligence. Rest in peace, Stan. I want to thank you for your generous wheat, the laughter we shared, and most of all, your kindness. God bless and keep your family. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Anita, for that. Thanks. I mean, I, I didn't, share, I I didn't share know your him personally, pain deeply. but he was, you know, he was a, a follower of mine on Twitter, and I, as okay. I followed him, you knew yes. him. I didn't know him personally, but for some reason we followed each other yeah. on Twitter. And I always remember thinking, I love this guy's yeah. uh, tweets, you know. So it really just it, it was such a sad thing when I heard. I think it was a couple of days. Yeah, died on days, Sunday. Yeah, that, yeah, that he died, and and to think that it was something so ridiculous as that. And unavoidable. Unavoidable. And you know, and I thought, I started thinking, God, how many people have gone through this? Many. I know in the last month many. alone, I heard of, there was a young child that we sort of know, it's like a, a three, four year old boy. And um, he was taken to hospital. His parents took him to hospital and because he was having some, he was just unwell. Rather than they treat him or examine him or do enough tests in order to find out what was going on, they started treating the poor boy for malaria, right? Uh, and then they Nova, gave him, they gave him some antibiotics, yeah. right? And then within three days, that was the end of that child. The child just passed away. Then an aunt or a, a woman that I know who I would refer to as an aunt, um, died recently because she was having some problems at home. She couldn't breathe or something. They took her to the hospital. And then uh, as the nurse administered an injection again to mm. treat malaria, the woman started, you know, she couldn't breathe. And that was the end of it. And that was 
her life gone. Okay. So, you know, when you, you look at the way, why are we always so quick to jump to one kind of, um, well, what's what diagnosis? And it's usually malaria or whatever. But on, we, the, on the scan with typhoid, yeah. every time you go to any of these yeah, funny hospitals, typhoid, first thing they'll tell you is typhoid. typhoid. You, you see, we all have personal experiences on yes, this yes. issue, including my, my uncle, my mother's younger brother, Christopher Abu, who had them um, had born and then the next thing he was admitted, given uh, injections, and then started jerking, yeah. and just died like that. Wow. When I now hmm. sat with the family and said, look, we need to write a petition, Christianity, religion. Yes. Oh, it won't bring back the dead. It was Let's meant to be. leave it for God. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it was meant to be. The same thing with um, a friend's wife that died at child childbed in one of the hospitals in uh, in Lagos here, mm. public hospital, mm. and then, oh, if you write a petition against the doctor now, will he bring her, he just he lose his job, but you need to remove him from, from the system. The system so and send a message you, out to other negligent doctors. So yes, religion yeah. will also come in. Mm. And, and, and then that's why nobody, like we all said here today, why the, the same reason why the youth with be body here, when the, the man who is at the helm of affairs does not have faith, in the public institution that he has sworn to protect, to defend. To defend. He would rather go out for medical treatment abroad, that says take everything. his children for medical treatment, take his children to school abroad. That says everything. Libro, so that there was no panador in, in the clinic, clinic in of the, the presidential house. villa. I, I remember my first child at six months, he was tooling and vomiting at the same time. Rushed him to public hospital. Don't tell me malaria or typhoid. No, we, if we had even gotten to that level. You know, we, for an emergency, we were outside for almost three hours. Mm. Wow. Collect card, wow. do this one. And you know, at the end of the day, luckily somebody referred us to a private hospital where he was quickly att attended, attended to. to. Imagine somebody that does not have money. Yeah you know, to rush to yeah. a private wow. hospital. Wow. Some of these private hospitals also do the same thing. So, and that's why I completely agree with you. There should be some form of medical insurance, mm. you know. And then the NMA cannot sit down there and know what's happening everywhere. This idea of Christianity, God give it, God take it, or in Islam, they say, oh, God has given, God has taken. We should learn to also learn, to, we should hold people accountable. Responsible. Absolutely. Responsible for their actions and inactions. We are not holding government responsible. We are not holding private people well, responsible. You are even holding and responsible. then what is the value of life here? Okay, okay, let me just come in because I made some notes while you were talking. I mean, sometimes people argue that it's because we don't have enough money, but quickly responding to what Libra said about his son, triage is just the method where you teach the staff to know how to select the people that need immediate attention. That doesn't cost anything. It just means you need to know who is an emergency, who Who's can not. wait. You can just keep someone out there for three hours and not care if they die or if they can't. But anyway, so very quickly, I, I, I had a consultation with someone who is a medical practitioner who works in you know, quality assurance. And I'm sure hopefully this uh, advocacy will go beyond because we need the people who are concerned to hear about it. And he was saying that, look, it's one thing to have medical insurance, the medical practitioner's insurance, but that on its own will not solve the problem. Yeah. So he was recommending three things and he said, look, first of all, the patients need to be empowered. Patients need to be ready to ask their doctors, what treatment are you giving me? Yeah. And put them on the spot. Because I, I was surprised yesterday <laughs> to learn that a colleague of mine whose wife was having a baby was told he should go and wait somewhere else. The husband should be there when the wife is having the baby. He couldn't barely hear his yeah. wife's voice. You don't know what's going on. If they gave her another baby, you wouldn't even know. So what I was saying is three things, and I'm on point number one. So the first one is that patients themselves need to be empowered, and they need to be emboldened to ask questions. Doctors are not gods. They should let you know, they, if, if possible, give you access to your yeah. patient's records, because that's the only way they will know that they're serving you. The second thing is that the Medical and Dental Council need to themselves start making, this is why I want this thing to go further. They need to know that they also duty of care to make the doctors accountable to us and to let patients know that if you find that you've uh, someone has committed an offense against you, you have, this is the route by which you should complain. And they should give us um, incidences of successful people who have complained about this. So people will be encouraged to take action. They can do this. So finally, the lawyers themselves, people like Libras, need to be able to step up to the plate and say, we're offering pro bono service here. Even when you oh. offer, be the big family will tell you, leave it for God. I know, but not That's when they are now people. enlightened by the Medical yeah. and Dental Council, not when the doctors, we need to create a more Active Doctors society who know their rights. To know. No, no, it doesn't matter. It, it, this, is a, this, is this is a societal war. This is a societal war. You know, everybody needs to fight yeah. it together. I, I, I was I'll, on a chemist where somebody was asking, oh, please, this drug, what is it for? The man said, no, no, no. 
You are not supposed to I know. know. But not now. And when I, you've heard this advocacy, you say, say no. no. Yeah. He has a right to of know. Of he does. You can't just be giving in him a plastic a bag. He doesn't even know the name. He doesn't know, yeah. you know what it is for. Yeah. He should know. Yeah. You, you see, liberal. Liberals. I think okay. impunity beyond corruption is our problem. Yes. Do you understand? Yeah. Mm. You do something and nobody is. So in 2018, on my birthday, I went to Solo General Hospital to just yes. pro bono. And guess what? An 85-year-old man just fell down, trying to help him. And I saw this young doctor, a female, shouting on the man. Baba, I'm a kusi bielo, kusi le. That is, Baba, don't die here, go and die at home, something like that. Uh -oh. I forgot it was my birthday. I left everything I was doing, and I went to her. I tried to say, you know what? I don't think you have it as at home. The way and manner our medical practitioners, the way they treat people, you don't think there is flesh and blood on them. Oh, wow. Go to loot as I speak to you now. They don't have lift. The lift they have in 1960 is what they are still. Yeah, now yeah. they don't I have lift. That. I experienced Go that. to loot now they don't have. We have to carry So two weeks ago, a 14 year old girl was oh being pushed you know, to, to the theater for an operation and gas finished as they were pushing her. We lost a friend early this year, who was abandoned for nine hours in the hospital because a particular money was not brought. United Nations will give free drugs to this hospital, and these doctors and nurses will take these drugs out for sale. Many cancerless people, they don't have cancer, had been forced to do chemo in this Nigeria. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Yes, it's true. Last because week, of the money. My, neighbor, my neighbor lost his sister, his younger sister, in Ife. Because they gave her wrong injection, the lady died and the daughter died just last week. You see, Ebeka, it's, it's... not only politicians will be beaten at this rate. Medical doctors, police will be beaten. Wow. Well, okay. it's, um, like I said, it's, it's uh, deeply personal, tragic, and frightening. Some experiences bring you face to face with harsh realities that we live with. We advocate so that others can be spared their experience. Need keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook Plus TV Africa hashtag Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa hashtag Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time. Keep advocating for a better society. Bye for now. Bye bye. Bye. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you yeah. can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics and enjoys for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a very backfire. Very <laughs> terrible strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Yeah.